A very good evening to all. This is Sindhu Panikar, the anchor of this inaugural talk, who feel privileged to welcome you all to the second edition of Orange City Literature Festival 2020, the extravaganza which propels opportunities, creativity and colourfulness of youth. It's a time to enjoy the splash of knowledge which enables us to push ourselves to new standards of excellence. Today, we are here to discuss on how to turn setbacks into comebacks. It's a great honour to have amidst us today the most cherished and celebrated personality. A persona who is an author, educator, business consultant and a much sought after speaker. Being just a motivational speaker is executed by many today. But touching lives of people through his dynamic approach to inspire and encourage individuals to realize their true potential is what makes our expert a distinctive individual. Ladies and gentlemen, brace yourself to grace the man of revolution, Mr. Shiv Kera. His 40 years of research and understanding has put millions on the path of growth and fulfillment. He has taken his dynamic personal messages to opposite sides of the globe from the US to Singapore. Over 8 million copies of his books have been sold globally, including his international bestseller, You Can Win, in 21 languages. His clients include Lufthansa, HP, DHL, HSBC, Canon, Nestle, Philips, Mercedes, Johnson & Johnson, MetLife, and many more. Tens of thousands have benefited from his dynamic workshop internationally in over 20 countries and millions have heard him as a keynote speaker. He has appeared on numerous radio and television shows. Mr. Kera is the brand ambassador of Roundtable Foundation. He has been honoured by the Lions International and Rotary International. His trademark is winners don't do different things. They do things differently. During the lockdown, Mr. Kera has executed over 100 webinars where over 1 million people have logged in. Mr. Shiv Kera has offered his 11 cardinal rules for business success complimentary for all participants who want to download and the link would be appearing on your screens towards the end of this webinar. So before we start the session, we request the audience to switch off your mobile phones to avoid distractions during the session. So ladies and gentlemen, let's hear from Mr. Shiv Kera. Over to you, sir. Sindhu, first of all, thank you very much. In fact, you've been a very brave lady going through all this rough uh, background, but you maintained your cool. God bless you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Wonderful. All right, folks, <clears throat> whatever time we have left now, quickly I'll go because I know you have other programs. But uh, we have this little title, Turn Setback into Comeback. Because in my own life, I've had three major setbacks where I went into a minus in my life, minus. And what helped me come back is really what I'm going to share. Now, I'm not that educated. My academics are, I'm a BCom third division. I failed in my 10th. That's my academics. I come from a business family. We had coal mines in India, close to a thousand people working and the mines got nationalized. The government took over. And right from being a mine owner, we came on the street. Street means street. Now I didn't create the mines. I inherited them. My father had died when I was in college. We were left with the liability and the assets were gone. And I was married only four weeks then. I remember a year later, my daughter was born and I sold some of the last piece of my mother's jewelry to get released from the hospital. I did not have 10 bucks to buy milk that night. Okay, with that, and then I tried my hands on three businesses with no money and I failed in all three. Finally, November 13, 1975, I left India, went to US, initially went to Toronto, and started life with a bucket in my hand, washing cars door to door. For about a year and a half, I was washing cars on the street. And then, totally by accident, I got into selling life insurance. And then, 
within three months, my manager called to fire me for non-performance. But then from this point onwards, there were some turning points which changed my life and the direction changed. And I became a million dollar producer, moved on to the US, got into three businesses. I bought out a company out of California in 1984, started the New Jersey operation with no clients. I sold my company with close to 500 clients for a decent sum. Now that's my journey. And I'm gonna share a little bit, whatever time I have as of now. Now this pandemic, has gone from one city to another, covered the whole world, overcrowded hospitals, shortage of supplies, orders getting canceled, factories are closing, death rate going up, unemployment going up. Now with this scenario, it has literally shaken up the whole world. People are feeling totally uncertain and the uncertainty is causing, causing insecurity. And the insecurity is causing a lot of stress, anxiety, frustration, depression, and even anger. Now, all I can say is stress is both normal and natural. Anybody who says they don't have stress, they belong in the lunatic asylum. We all have stress. Now, and folks, all stress is not bad. In fact, many times it is stress that makes us perform. The athlete at the Olympics, is he under stress? Answer is yes. If he was not, there's no way he can perform. The example that I can think which best fits in is at the race course, we all have either seen in real life or in the movies, the thoroughbreds, Sindhu, the thoroughbreds, when they are being table, taken into the cabin, are they walking straight? No, 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 no. The thoroughbreds are jumping like this. When they are taken to the cabin, they're jumping like this. Why are they jumping? They are under very heavy stress. And they are taken to the cabin. And the moment the bell rings, what happens? They shoot and they perform. Now, that's a thoroughbred. But if you take a jackass to the race course, this jackass walks so relaxed, comfortable, cool. He is walking so casually. He is not jumping like the thoroughbreds. But remember, this jackass for the rest of his life will remain a jackass. And he will never perform like a thoroughbred in life. Now, this statement is very important. Remember, stress is the price we pay to be a thoroughbred in life. I repeat one more time. Stress is the price we pay to be a thoroughbred in life. Now, see, Sindhu, all of us can handle stress. Everybody can handle stress. What we cannot handle is chronic stress. Are you with me? We cannot handle is chronic stress. When stress becomes chronic, that is the time we have a problem. Think about it. How come under the same set of circumstances, some people break records while others break themselves? How come? Identical circumstances. Now, let us not overrate this crisis and threat, and let us not underrate our strength to fight and win. Now, this crisis has impacted us three ways. One, our life. Two, our livelihood. Three, our lifestyle. How has that impacted our life? First of all, nobody knows who will be in quarantine next. None of us know that. I repeat, none of us know who will be in quarantine next. And two, what we do and where we go and who we meet could be a matter of life and death. Now, that is the life part. The number two is the livelihood. Now, folks, all of us have been impacted as individuals, salary cuts, job cuts, even businesses have closed. And in New York, almost 40% of Restaurants have closed permanently, permanently gone forever. And even the governments are going bankrupt because they're not collecting any taxes. Now, who are the people who are worst hit? There are three kinds of people in the world everywhere. One, the super rich to the mediocre and three, the poor. The poor are the worst hit because they are the daily wage earners. They work during the day, eat in the evening. They're the worst hit. Now comes the super rich. 
super rich are people they don't have a livelihood problem they don't have a cash flow problem sindhu i was just reading last week apple computers has 250 billion dollars in cash reserve now they can't have a cash flow problem they don't have a livelihood problem same thing i was reading in the economic times is an article here our friend mukesh ambani during the lockdown period only he's increasing his health by 90 crore rupees per hour how do you like that 90 crores per hour during the lockdown period so this guy does not have a cash flow problem does not have a livelihood problem now that leaves people like mediocre people like me and some of the listeners the mediocres are thinking will the crisis finish before the money or will the money finish before the crisis are you with me now comes to the next side comes the third side is the lifestyle part now look at this part in the lifestyle till the lockdown came in all of us were in the fast lane we were all running 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 we were all running where we were going we didn't know but we had no time we had no time now look at this what a paradox the amount of time saving devices we have today we have never had that many in history and yet we don't have what <laughs> we don't have time you know why we don't have time because somewhere we messed up our priorities and I'm not lecturing here. I'm guilty myself. And whenever we mess up our priorities, we forget to distinguish between what's urgent in life and what's important in life. Urgent may or may not be important, and important may or may not be urgent. But the interesting thing is, whenever we ignore what is important, it always converts into urgent. Now look at this. Health is important, but it's not urgent. Exercising every day is important, but it's not urgent. Now, if I have a crucial meeting tonight and if I cannot exercise, it's not the end of the world. But if I ignore my health long enough, guess what happens? I will land up in the hospital. See, interesting thing is, whenever we ignore what is important, it always converts into urgent. See, in life, relationships are important. But they're not urgent. But if you ignore relationship long enough, guess what happens? You start talking through your lawyers. It changes the picture. Now, what this crisis has done is it has literally forced people to step backwards and reevaluate the priorities. You ask people, why do you go to work? I go to work for my family. Who are the most important people in your life? My family. And who are the most neglected? Also, my family. What a joke. The most important people also become the most neglected too, which is sad. And this crisis has done is that it has stopped people to step backwards and say, buddy, till now, you were running, 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 running. But were you running in the right direction? If the direction was not right, you go away from your goals in life. And now this has made people realize that in life, direction is much more important than speed. I repeat, direction in life is much more important than speed. Now, with that in mind, you see, let me share with you some steps how to overcome this crisis how do we overcome this crisis i normally have nine steps if i have time normally i do it but i'll see if i can cover at least four or five of these steps today in the time that i have but my time finishes what time about 6 40 or 6 50 is that right i can't hear you i can't hear you it's actually seven sir sorry seven seven okay okay then I'll, I'll so i have about 25 minutes so we can 
move on with it. But let me cover with you at least some steps how to overcome the crisis. And I'll go slow. If you want to note this down, please do so. Step one, step one is the serenity prayer. Serenity prayer. See, serenity prayer. About 45 years ago, I attended a program by Dr. Norman Vincent Peel, the man who wrote the book, Power of Positive Thinking. There were about a thousand people. I was one of them. As Dr. Peel came in, looked at everybody and said, you people appear so cool, calm, comfortable. It appears nobody has a problem here. So he said, it appears nobody has a problem here. Then he asked, does anybody have a problem here? So everybody raised their hand. We all have problems. Who doesn't have problems? Then he said, how many people would like to get rid of the problem? Again, everybody raised their hand. Then Dr. Peel said, while I was coming here, two blocks away from here, I saw some people. They were all relaxed, comfortable, and uh, stretched out. They had no problem whatsoever. How many people would like to know where that place is? Again, everybody raised their hand. And then Dr. Peel said, two blocks away from here, there is a cemetery. There is a cemetery. There are people lying there, all stretched out, relaxed, comfortable. They have no problem whatsoever. And they asked, how many people would like to get rid of the problem? Nobody raised their hand. Everybody put their hand in the pocket. Then Dr. Peel said, remember, problem is a sign of life. So long as we are alive, we shall have problems. The day we don't have problems, we'd be dead. And he said, when you're running short of problems, that is the time to get on your knees and pray to God. Have you stopped trusting me anymore? Send me some problems. And that day he gave a prayer, which is called the serenity prayer, in my opinion, it is the crux of life. And for the past 45 years, I have never left my home without my prayer. And I have come across a lot of adverse situations and the prayer has helped me overcome them. And I will repeat it. I believe quite a few people, listeners are comfortable with Hindi. I will use English and Hindi together. So I will use the, say the prayer twice, once in English, once in Hindi. It goes like this. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change and courage to change the things that I can and wisdom to know the difference what I can and what I cannot. Paramatma mujhe itna santulan do ki jo mein badal nahi sakta aap ki saugat samaj ke swikar karo. Aur agar badal sakta hoon तो मुझे इतनी हिम्मत और हौसला दो कि मैं उसे बदल दूं और इतनी सुबुद्धि दो कि उनमें फर्क बता सकूं क्या बदल सकता हूं और क्या मैं नहीं बदल सकता नाउ गॉड ग्रांट मी द सिरेनिटी टू एक्सेप्ट द थिंग्स दैट आई कैन नॉट चेंज इफ यू एनालाइज दिस एंड डाइसेक्ट दिस लिटिल फेयर गॉड ग्रांट मी द सिरेनिटी टू एक्सेप्ट द थिंग्स दैट आई कैन नॉट चेंज नाउ माई क्वेश्चन इज can we change everything the way we want this in life? No. Do we control everything the way you like to? No. Can we manipulate and turn around things? No. There are many things beyond us such as, I didn't choose my parents, neither did you. I didn't decide where I was going to be born and neither did you. If this is my height and the color of my skin, there's nothing I can do about it. And granted, sometimes people are born deformed. Some people are born deformed. Some people are born deformed. और कई बार अच्छे लोगों के साथ बुरे हाथ से भी हो जाते हैं वो रॉन्ग डिड दे डू नोज हाउ डिड दिस कोरोना क्राइसिस कम वी डोंट नो बट इट्स हियर और वो कहता है कि साहब व्हाट आई कैन नॉट चेंज लेट मी एक्सेप्ट इट ग्रेशियसली नॉट ग्रजिंगली आपकी सौगात समझ के स्वीकार करो बिकॉज मेनी टाइम्स इन लाइफ we keep fighting the things we just cannot change and we bring stress into our lives and we become paralyzed and we become unproductive 
तो अगर बदल नहीं सकता आपकी सौगात समझ के स्वीकार करो एंड इफ आई कैन चेंज देन गिव मी द करेज टू डू इट एंड विजडम टू नो वट आई कैन एंड वट आई कैनॉट तो मैंने जब अपनी नई किताब लिखी जो लॉन्च हुई लास्ट ईयर लंदन में द टाइटल ऑफ द बुक इज यू कैन अचीव मोर तो उसमें आई टुक दिस थॉट टू स्टेप्स फॉरवर्ड एंड वेंट अवेयर इन देर आई रिटर्न दैट लाइफ इज फुल ऑफ चॉइसिस एंड लाइफ इज फुल ऑफ कॉम्प्रोमाइज सिंप लाइक अ कॉन्ट्रोडिक्शन बट नॉट रियली हाउ इज लाइफ फुल ऑफ चॉइसिस लुक एट दिस If I ill treat you, I have chosen to be ill treated. Have and I. If I treat you with discourtesy, I have chosen to be treated with discourtesy. Have and I. And if I light up a cigarette, I have chosen to invite cancer. Have and I. And if I drink and drive, I have chosen to invite an accident. Have and I. And if I exercise every day. I have chosen to invite good health, haven't I? And if I eat too much every day, I have chosen to be obese, haven't I? And if I tell lies, I have chosen to lose my credibility, haven't I? And if I tell the truth, I have chosen to be a credible person, haven't I? See, life is full of choices. Now, very important. we are all free to the point of choice but after we make our choices the choice controls the chooser we have no more choice our freedom stops sindhu we are all free to the point of choice but after we make our choices the choice controls the chooser we have no more choice after that now how is life full of compromises see as somebody said well in life we cannot choose the cards that are dealt to us what we can choose how we play the game sab zindagi mein taash ke patte kaise milte hain iska faisla hum nahi kar sakte khel kaise khelte hain iska faisla hum zarur kar sakte hain and sometimes nature gives us a lemon the choice is ours do we cry or do we make lemonade that's a choice aur kai bari mere se log puchte hain mr khera people who are successful don't they make mistakes in life and people who fail in life don't they do positive things in life my answer is that people who are successful they do make mistakes but remember making a mistake once in a while does not make anybody a failure repeating the same mistake again and again is what brings failure and doing something positive once in a while does not bring success either repeating the same positive behavior again and again is what brings success so what is success series of positive choices in life is called success and series of negative choices in life is called failure and that's about it that's it now this is one part now number 2 second step you see to overcome this crisis or stress we need to learn to turn down time to up time convert wasted time to productive time how do you do it before this crisis took place in the us there was a survey conducted which said an average american watches 3 to 4 hours of television per day since this was before the crisis right now there are people watching 8 10 hours of tv per day now before the crisis average american watched 4 hours of tv per day this is not average american this is also average european australian indian everybody is watching 4 hours of tv per day average so one person went to a friend who used to watch 4 hours of tv per day and said how much did this tv cost you so the man said the tv cost me a thousand dollars he should don't understand how to calculate things in life he asked him have you ever calculated the money value of your time he said no but 
if I make $100,000 per year, and if I work $2,000 hours per year, my one hour time is worth $50. And he said, if you watch four hours of TV per day, $50 times four is $200 per day. Multiply 365, you watch 365 days a year. This TV is not costing you $1,000. This TV is costing close to $100,000 per year. That is more than your EMI on a million dollar home. You don't understand that. How do you make calculation in life? You don't know. Now, don't get me wrong. We all like to watch TV. It is nice movie. There's nice play. We enjoy it. But tell me, watching four hours of TV per day, what are you doing? You are wasting your life. That's all you're doing. And all the actors are making money. They enjoy it. They want you to watch it anyway. The more you watch, the more they make money. Okay. Now, in my book, You Can Achieve More, I have given a survey which said that 85% of millionaires and billionaires in the world today are first generation. Sindhu, that's a sunira. 85% of millionaires and billionaires in the world today are first generation. Only 15% are coming from inheritance. So, in such time, mein, how did you achieve so much financial success? So, in the job, Sunira, we read books. We read books. How many books? 50 books a year. 50 books a year means one book a week. One book a week. Look at this. Multi-millionaires and billionaires read one book a week. Warren Buffett, you must have heard the name. He reads 100 pages per day. Bill Gates is an avid reader. Look at this. Multi-millionaires and billionaires attribute their success to one reading one book a week. So what does it tell us? There is a connection between learning and earning and learning and earning and learning and earning and learning and learning. Learn more, earn more, learn more, earn more. Now, and they were asked, what kind of books do you read? And the answer was, we have no time to waste, so we don't read fiction. We only read self-help books. Why? One good idea is worth a million dollars. One good idea is worth a million dollars. And... I've also noticed that people who are serious readers, they don't borrow or lend books. They never borrow or lend books. Many times people come to me and they say, Mr. Kera, I've got a great new book. I can lend it to you. I said, don't. Either give it to me, gift it to me, sell it to me, don't lend it to me. Why? Because I won't give it back to you. Why? Because when I read a good book, I always underline, make notes on the side. Why? Because I learned one thing. That reading a good book once is not good enough. Why? Because when you read a good book the second time, you don't find anything new in the book, but you find something new in yourself. And third time when you read a book, again you find something new in yourself. And fourth time, nothing new in the book, but you find something new new in yourself. Now, Aero Electronics, $26 billion company out of U.S., they're my clients. The managing director attended my program about 20 years ago. And he said, Mr. Kira, I bought all your books. And I, got, I took all the books and gave it to all my people here in my office. And he said, when I took over as managing director of Arrow uh, Electronics, we had only 2% market share. He said, today we have 20% market share. 20% market share. And he said, during a lockdown period, when everybody's closing, he said, we have had the bumper quarter last 90 days. We want to celebrate a $2 billion in 90 days sale. And they celebrated, and I was keynoting there in this award function. And he said, Mr. Kera, all my people have read your books. Everybody, and not only they have read your book once, every year, it is mandatory we all read your books once a year, and we have read your books 20 times, 20 times. 
So many times people say to me, look at this, a connection between learning and earning and learning and earning and learning and earning. And many times people tell me, Mr. Kira, I've read your book once. I said, you wasted your time. You wasted your time. You have not got anything out of the book, then you wasted your money and your time. Books, there are many books I read five, six, seven times. I read seven times a book. Look, all I can say is that during this lockdown period, if we have not upskilled ourselves or become more knowledgeable or healthier and fitter, it is not because we lack time, but because we lack self-discipline and commitment. And uh, I, was, I used to read 30, 40 books a year at one time, and I dropped the habit. I went back to my library, started reading my books. And I, I, I read my books every day. I spend every day close to two to three hours per day in my either reading or listening to some good video, audio, video tape every day. Stop wasting time. Convert your wasted time to uptime. And not only that, the lockdown took place in March. And Sindhu, my first program webinar I did on April 8th. Now, till April 8th, I was learning to do SMS for my grandchildren. I did not know how to turn a computer on. I had never in my life done an email. Never. And you know something? I have learned this only in the last 90 days. And in the last 90 days, I've done 110 webinars, 110 webinars. And I'm giving out dates in January. And people are paying for these webinars, by the way. They're paying us now. What is it? I am upskilled. I'm reading my books every day. I lost six kilos of weight. I lost six kilos. I'm exercising every day. Look at it. It's great. Convert your wasted time to, to productive time. Okay, now, next part is to overcome the crisis. Build strong relationships in life. I repeat, build strong relationships in life. Folks, our biggest asset is not our bank balance. Our biggest asset in life is our relationship balance. Have you noticed one thing? That people who have good relationships, what they can achieve with one phone call you cannot see with a million dollars. Are you with me? I repeat, people who have good relationships, what they can achieve with one phone call, you cannot achieve with a million dollars. Now, in many schools and colleges, they teach networking. MBA students are learning networking, networking, networking. And many times they jo join Rotaries, Lions, Chamber of Commerce is to do what? Networking. And you ask them, why are you networking? And the answer is, I am building contacts, contacts. I'm building contacts. And you ask them, why are you building contacts? Why are you building contacts? Well, I'm building contacts because someday he could be useful. He's an IES guy, IPS guy, doctor, lawyer, cop. He's a mafia, he's a cop, he's a politician. You don't know he could be useful someday. So I am building contacts. Now look at this. People who are building contacts, and why are you building contacts? Because someday he could be useful. And now what happens, Simbu? Hey, usefulness goes, hey, friendship also goes. Hear this carefully. There's a big difference between building contacts versus building relationships. Are you with me? There is a big difference between building contacts versus building relationships. Yeah? So, usefulness goes, friendship also goes. You can never in life build relationship with people like that because all they're looking for is extracting something out of you. They are selfish people, rascals, parasites. They're only takers. You can never build relationships with people like that. Now, we have an office in Singapore. 
One evening I came from dinner. I met a person in the lobby. He asked me, are you come from dinner? I said, yes, you met some people. I said, yes. And his first thing was, I hope you met some people who could be useful to you. I felt like giving him a piece of my mind and something else too. See, his only one thing was, I hope you met people who could be useful to you. Usefulness means what you can extract out of them. You can get something out of them. He doesn't understand. He does not understand that usefulness is a byproduct of relationship. He's only looking to extract something. Out. He doesn't understand that meeting good people is good enough in life. I repeat, meeting good people is good enough in life. Usefulness is a byproduct. Now, I share with you that, uh, you see, relationships are built only, only when, when you are willing to add a value addition to another person's life. And to add a value addition, you must learn to give in life. You must learn to give. A taker with just a taker, you cannot build relationships in life. They're only looking to extract something out of you. Now, I'll share with you. If I have a friend of 20 years, and if he has a problem tonight, who's the most natural person he will go for help? Obviously, the friend of 20 years. Is it my duty to help? Answer is yes. And if I help you, am I doing a favor? No. Remember one thing. Helping each other is a duty of a friend. It is never the purpose of friendship. If it is a purpose of friendship, then purpose finishes and friendship finishes also. Helping each other is, is a duty of a friend, but always remains incidental to friendship, never the purpose of friendship. Now, I share this because all that I'm talking here today I don't know any school and college in this world that is teaching all this here that I've just shared in the last 45 minutes. I don't know anyone. Now, I've been doing corporate training for the past 35 years, leadership training with Lufthansa and many other companies. Now, in Singapore, we have an office and the dean of James Cook University from Australia attended our program. And he said, Mr. Kerr, I've been in academics for the past 30 years. I've never seen anything like this. And now they've signed up and they've partnered with us we're setting up a center of leadership excellence for them in Singapore. And what we're doing is, when we do corporate training, we say what we're doing in the corporation is repair work, repairing. Now, if you prepare them, you won't have to repair them. Where do you prepare them? You prepare them in schools and colleges. And sadly, there's no school and college doing all this stuff here. And that is where we came up with a new program called Prepare Them, Don't Repair Them. Prepare them, don't repair them and and uh, we've been doing this program for for rajgiri business school in cochin for the last six years the leadership program but the most important thing is in life to overcome any kind of crisis build strong relationship that is your support group now how much time do i have still more 10 minutes okay now, I'm just going to quickly wind up with two items more. I think we have to close at seven sharp. Is that right? Okay. So I'm going to cover two items more. And that is, you see, become a, become a proactive person. Become a proactive person. When we do a leadership program, we ask people, are you a good person? And sometimes people say, yes, I'm good. And you ask them, what makes you good? They say, well, I don't do bad, so I'm good. I don't tell lies, I don't steal, so I'm good. And my answer is, I disagree with your answer. See, not doing bad does not make a person good. If I don't steal, it only means I'm not a thief, but that does not make me good. If I don't tell lies, it only means I'm not a liar. That does not make me good. See, go ask a medical doctor. Absence of ill health does not mean good health. See, a person becomes good only when they proactively do good. Not doing bad does not make a person good. Now, why am I sharing this with you? I've been doing leadership programs for so long, and I've learned one thing, that a good leader always takes a stand for something and takes a stand against something. They're not neutral. If you're neutral, you're a politician. Are you with me? 
If you are not tell you are a politician, a good leader takes a stand for something, takes a stand against something. So why am I sharing this with you? Because I did a program for about 5,000 people one time, and a person from the audience came up to me and said, Mr. Kera, are you a Gandhian? Now, Sindhu, I learned one thing. Before replying, you should always clarify the question, and two, sometimes the best answer to a question is a question. So I don't know what got into my mind. I asked him, sir, can you define a Gandhian? Who is a Gandhian? What are the criteria of being a Gandhian? So a man says, Gandhi believed in three principles in life. One, Gandhi believed that with love, you can win everybody in this world. One. Two, Gandhi believed in the principle of tolerance. Sanchilta. Three, Gandhi believed in the principle of non-violence. Non-violence. Three principles. So he asked me again, are you a Gandhian? I don't know what got into my mind. I said to him, I said, sir, I've been living in the U.S. for the past 45 years, but I'm an Indian. And we respect our epics like the Ramayana, the Bhagavad Gita, and the Mahabharata, and Guru Granth Sahib. I've not read them, but I've heard them. So I asked him, sir, can you tell me, was Ram a Gandhian? Was Ram a Gandhian? Now let us look at the three principles of being a Gandhian. Number one, you said, with love, you can win everybody. Tell me, was Ram able to win with love? Answer is, answer is, no. So Ram failed the first test. Two, you said tolerance. Did Ram say, I'm a very tolerant person? You kidnap my wife away, it's okay, I'll get a second one. You kidnap a second one, I'll get a third one. You kidnap a third one, I'll get a fourth one. Did he say that? He said, no, I do not tolerate kidnappers. Three, you said non-violence. Okay. Can you see me? Can you hear me all right? Can you hear yes, me? I'm, yes, I'm able to hear you, sir. Okay. Can you see me also? Yes. Okay, fine. Let's continue. Okay. And and the third principle is the third principle is non-violence. I said, tell me, what did Ram do? He had to pull out his weapon and he had to kill the evil. Now, even for self-defense, that was violence. So I said, Ram fell to threat, and that means Ram was not a Gandhian. No, I said, well then, why do we go that far? Just look at the life history of 10 Sikh Gurus. The 10th Guru, Guru Govind Singh Sahib, when the Mughals were forcibly converting into Islam, was he able to win with love? Answer is no. Did he say, I will tolerate to terrorism? He said, no. Did he have to pull the weapon? He did. So. He had to pull the weapon. That was violence. So I said, he felt that also he was not a Gandhian either. So I said, look, you talk of our scriptures. My name is Pucha Ki Bhaiya, Ek Bata Dije Kaun Se Granth Me Likha Hai. Jab Dushman Aap Ki Bahu Betiyo Ki Izzat Ki Nilami Kar Raha Ho, Kaun Se Granth Me Likha Hai Us Time, Aap Mandir Me Jaake Bhajan Kirtan Kijiye Aur Meditation Kijiye. Where does it say? Nowhere. There is a time to fight, and not fighting is called cowardice. That is not called tolerance. And Ram didn't stand neutral. He took a stand for something, took a stand against something. He didn't talk of unconditional love. I love everybody here. He didn't say that. And he didn't say either, I must look at things from this person's point of view. Uska point of view What point of view? Folks, I share this because there are many youth listening to this message today. In life, we need to learn to take a stand for something and take a stand against something. And he asked me, he said, sir, are you a Gandhian? I said, I am not a Gandhian. I am not a Gandhian. Okay, now, just quickly, I'll wind up. The next one is... If you want to overcome any crisis in life, Learn to accept responsibility in life. Zindagi mein zimmewari uthana sikhe hum loon ko. Sab, bohut jaruri chiz baat kehna chahunga mein. 
कि विश्वास इंसान को शक्ति देता है लेकिन अंधविश्वास इंसान को कमजोर बनाता है आई रिपीट फेथ गिव स्ट्रेंथ बट ब्लाइंड फेथ लीडिंग टू सुपरस्टिशन वीक पीपल वाई आर शेयरिंग दिस विद यू बिकॉज वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट डैमेज डन टू इंडिया हैज बीन डन बाय आवर मीडिया प्रिंट मीडिया इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया एनी टाइम यू टर्न द टीवी ऑन वट यू सी यू सी ए बाबा जी गुरु जी महाराज स्वामी जी वेरिंग भगवा पहन के बैठे हैं सफेद पहन के बैठे हैं तिलक लगा के बैठे हैं तिलक लगा के बैठे हैं और पूछ रहे हैं बेटा कौन बोल रहे हो कहां से बोल रहे हो जन्म तिथि बोलो टाइम बोलो गुरु जी मालूम नहीं कहते हैं कोई बात नहीं अपना लैपटॉप निकाला टिक 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 एंड ई से तुम्हारे पे पत्नी दोष पुत्नी दोष पिता दोष फलाना दोष ये दोष चढ़ा हुआ है तो मंगली हो गए मंगली हो गए मंगली हो गए तुम्हारे पे शनि चढ़ गया शनि चढ़ गया शनि चढ़ गया एंड नाउ ई सेस गुरु जी शनि को उतारने का उपाय बोले उतारने का उपाय ये है एक काला रूमाल लो उसमें काली दाल डालो फिर काला काजल लगाओ उसमें फिर काले बाल वाला खोजो खोपड़ी में सात बारी घुमाओ काला कुत्ता खोजो काला बर्तन खोजो दिस इज वॉट पीपल आर डूइंग टूडे नाउ मैं आपसे एक बात पूछना चाहता हूं कि शनि को उतारना चढ़ाना उतारना चढ़ाना उतारना चढ़ाना इतना आसान है तो भैया भेजो को शनि को पाकिस्तान सब टेरिस को मरवा दो इलाके अगर शनि को उतारना चढ़ाना इतना आसान है तो भेजो शनि को लद्दाख चाइना से लड़वा दो मैं आपसे एक बात पूछना चाहता हूं कि वाई डज शनि परमानेंटली स्टे ओनली इन इंडिया शनि नेवर गोस टू ऑस्ट्रेलिया शनि नेवर गोस टू न्यूजीलैंड क्या प्रॉब्लम क्या है भाई शनि यही बैठा हुआ परमानेंट मैं आपसे यह बात क्यों कह रहा हूं If you read the life history of Swami Vivekanand, Swami Dayanand, Guru Nanak, they never believed in all these things. In fact, they fought against it. आप उनकी जीवनी तो पढ़ जाके Guru Nanak they fought against Andhvishwas. And if you look at all Sikh families, in their Sikh families there is no horoscope tally, there is no manglik, there is no shub mahurat in Sikhs. Every Sikh wedding is done on a Sunday. Sunday does it right? Do it on a Saturday. Saturday does it right? Do it on a Friday. So, I want to share with you an article. Share karna chahta hu. It is called superstition. Superstition. This article came out in India today in January 2018. This article is written because of astrology and superstition. In some parts of India, natural child birth has gone down by eighty percent, and this especially quote in South India, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Madras, eighty percent of child birth there is done through C-section operation. You know why? Because किसी जोशी ने कहा है यही अच्छी घड़ी है बच्चा निकालने की. They pull out the kid at that time. How do you like that? What a joke! यहां पर बिल्ली रास्ता काट जाती है गाड़ी रोक देते हैं और यहां पर लोग जाते हैं बाबा जी के पास भगवा पहने उनके पांव पकड़ते हैं बाबा जी क्या करें बाबा जी क्या करें एक बाबा कहता है जलेबी खाई थी कल नहीं खाई थी बोले यही प्रॉब्लम है उसके पांव पकड़ते हैं अरे जिसको जेल में होना चाहिए उसके पांव पकड़ रहे शर्म नहीं आती क्या वॉट आर यू टॉकिंग ये एक बाबा जी बाबा जी क्या करें कहता बाबा जी कहता बेटा प्रीत करो प्रीत करो एक बाबा प्रीत बेच रहा है एक बाबा हनी बेच रहा है एक बाबा हनी पीट मिक्स करके बेच रहा है कमाल हो मैं आपसे यह बात क्यों कह रहा हूं फॉर अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रीजन पढ़े लिखे स्टूडेंट्स एमबीए आपके जो यहां पे पढ़ रहे हैं कॉलेजेस में दिस इज वॉट दे आर डूइंग टूडे पीएचपी पढ़े लिखे यही कुछ कर रहे हैं मैं इसलिए कह रहा हूं कि मुझे एक इंसान बता दीजिए जिंदगी में जो सिर्फ ऊपर 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 गया है There is no person who always only goes up, 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 up like this. We all go up and down and up and down and up and down. जिंदगी में उतार चढ़ाव हर एक की जिंदगी में आता है. लेकिन, लेकिन जिसने जिंदगी में कहीं कुछ करना है, तो when there is a downturn in life, they analyze the situation और कहते हैं कि अगर दोबारा से ऐसी चीज आ जाएगी जिंदगी में, तो what will I do? Will I behave the same way? If I behave the same way, that means I have not learned anything. देखो इसको तकलीफ हो रही है. You see, I have not learned anything. They analyze, 
They learn from it, accept responsibility, and they don't repeat their mistakes. Later, they, and a person who's not looking to learn anything, you know when things go wrong, they say, not my fault, my stars are not favoring. And then they keep repeating the same mistake again and again and again. Now, I want to finish this thing that in this program, a man asked me to ask that Mr. Khera, many people go to the temple, they stay in the line for 12 hours to stay in the line for 12 hours. Do they say this or do they say this? Is it faith or blind faith? So I said, listen to me, I go to my house from my home, I go to my house from my home, I go to my house from my home, I pray every day. Why? Because I believe in God. Now, you believe in God. Have you ever seen God? Do you know where is God? Who is God? What is God? Do you have answers to it? Now, I have no answer for it. I don't know. Now, I ask them, why do you believe in God? Where is God? Then why do you believe in God? The reason I believe in God is because there are so many things in this world which are totally unexplained. Unexplained. Now, unexplained could be a miracle or a mystery. But the way I see it, they are superhuman. Superhuman. And that superhuman is called superpower. And the superpower is, I call it God. That's all. Now, I pray. But in the last 45 years, maybe six, seven times I've gone to a temple. No more. And that, that's about it. Now, I feel very strongly that 90% of people who go to temples today, they go there more out of fear than out of faith. Are unko darate hai, ye nahi karoge, ye ho jayega, ye nahi karoge, ye ho jayega, ye nahi karoge, ye ho jayega. Aur dar ke maare pancher kiya hoa sab ko. Sara desh kaap karke baitha hoa hai. Which weakens people. Main ye baat is wajah se keh raho, and yehi baat to mein keh raho, this is the last thing, is that there is one community all over the world. It is time to contribute. Or a community, Sindhu, all over the world who has been honored everywhere. All over the world for the humanitarian service. And you know what that community is? The government of Canada, government of US, Australia, UK, New Zealand, every government in the world has honored this one community for the humanitarian service. And that community is the Sikh community of India. They've been honored everywhere. For the humanitarian service. Jante or kyun? Chuki, their concept of langar has been started 500 years ago since the time of Guru Nanak. And because the Sikh philosophy believes in caring, sharing, and daring. They're caring people, they care. They're sharing people, they share, and they're daring people, they dare. They have the guts to fight and courage to fight also, even. And Tuki Sikhi, Juhe, Sikhi Tiki, who hai, Eki Siddhant, Zulm Karna Pap, Zulm Sena, Usadi Bara Pap. And Sikhi ka team Siddhant, Hote, Namjap, one chak, Kiratka Namjap means God is formless. God is formless. There is no form. And one God, two. One shak is concept of sharing. And kiratkar. Kiratkar means work, work hard. They distinguish between making money versus earning money. Aap dekhe dunya, kaam karke roti khao. Aap dunya mein aaj tak, mere ko ek bata do sardar jo bheek mangta ho. Never. You will never see a sardar. You know why? Because to them, no work is too small. Mehnat se mandari se kaam kiya hua, paisa kamana, nothing is small. They will wash the bathroom, they will clean the toilet, they will clean your shoes, but they will not beg. Or, yehi sikhi siddhant pe tiki hui hai, or sardaron ke andar, there is no caste, there is no jat. Every sikh man is a singh, and every sikh woman is a kaur. There is no caste. And I wish, I wish, in India, if we had adopted the philosophy of Guru Granth Sahib and the Sikh philosophy in this country, instead of our own constitution, this country would have been totally a different country today. With those words, in the interest of time, 
I just want to close this. God bless all of you. Stay safe. And uh, the floor is back with you now. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure listening to you. As rightly quoted, every thought you produce, anything you say, any action you do, it bears your signature. So from whatever that we have got from your session, I personally stress on some of the takeaways from the session on overcoming crisis. The first starts with the serenity prayers followed by transforming the time that we waste as a productive time and the relationship building which should be succeeded over contact building which was very precise and which is the need for the hour and becoming a proactive person which most of us lack today and, and learning how to accept our responsibilities in life. It was again an amazing session. So hope rather I expect the insights that are shared by you would travel a long way with us to evolve and transform us into a better human being. So thank you so much once again sir for this thought provoking momentous session. That was Mr. Shiv Khera. In every moment, life gives us a chance to reform ourselves, and it completely depends on us to take an opportunity to improve ourselves. With that note, this is Sindhu Panikar wishing you a great learning and literature inclined. Goodbye. Twenty years of existence. Two universities, 23 educational institutes, offering 137 courses. Rice Group of Institutions, a vision beyond.